Hey there, and welcome back. So last time we started our Anatomy of a Website series by first talking about the website header and what it is and how it can help your website. If you missed that video, I highly recommend that you go back and check that out after you finish this video. Today we're actually going to move on sort of to the end and discuss footers. While they might be the last thing a person sees on any web page, they still play an important role. And they can even help people take the action that you want them to to continue down your sales funnel. And before we get too far along, if you want to see more videos on web design, e-commerce, digital marketing, WordPress, and other website related topics, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the ring the bell for notifications. Now let's get started. So what exactly is the website footer anyway? It's at the bottom of every page on basically every website ever. And it can be the last impression someone has before deciding if they want to move on to a different page on your website or just leave the website altogether. And it can also be just as helpful for navigating through the website as much as your header. So to that end, it can be a very important part of your web page, even if you don't see it very often. It can be a very good tool to help users get to where they want to be on your website. If you place social media links in your footer, it can help people find your business also where they can stay up to date with your business and maybe even come back to the website. And if you want, you can place a call to action sort of around the footer for people to take the next step through your sales funnel. And that can help increase conversions through your website. So don't overlook how important your footer can be to your website and ultimately to your business. So now that we know what the website footer is and why it's so important to your website, Let's take a look at the different elements that can make up a website footer on your website and other websites. The first element, and the one everyone will know, is the copyright date. This is on the footer of almost every web page on the internet today. And it's also either the most remembered element this time of year, or the most forgotten. If you want, you might want to make sure that it's been updated to 2022 or whatever the current year it might be that you're watching this video. Next, you can also have footer navigation down here as well. And I feel like this is a pretty underrated element. It can be a very helpful place to get people around your website. The navigation could be a simple horizontal list, or we can make it like three or four columns across. The choice is yours. Just make sure that it's user friendly and easy to navigate. Also, you will likely place your social media profile links here. Since you can take up a little bit more room down here than you can the header, it might be easier to fit those icons down here. Just make sure that they work well with the design of your website. If you use WordPress, the simple social icons plugin can really help you out here. Finally, the footer is a great place to put a call to action. While I will talk about calls to action later on in this series, essentially what they are is a button that gets the user to take a desired action you want them to take. This could be either signing up for a newsletter, downloading an information packet, or scheduling a time to talk with you. And a footer might be a good place to put one final reminder for the user to take that action. Just make sure it's not too crazy. So what makes for a good footer that you can try on your website? Well, first, a simple footer is a good footer. I know that you probably heard me say this a million times already in this series, but you know, simple can be better. If it's just like a simple one line that has the copyright date and information, a horizontal menu, uh, your social links and stuff like that, that works. Take for example the sports bench main theme. It has all of those things done in a simple manner. It doesn't try to do too much. That can work. Also, if you do have menus, make sure that they're easy to navigate. Your menus really shouldn't have drop downs like the header. That just looks weird. I'm personally a big fan of just having like one very simple menu, but if you want to have multiple menus in different columns, that works as well. Take the athletic for example. It has a couple of menus in the footer area, some with a lot of items, but they are laid out logically so you can find what you're looking for easily. And finally, just make sure that it fits in with the rest of the page. Yes, it might have a different background color from the rest of the page just to make it stand out or something like that, but make sure that it's not drastically different from the rest of the page. That just looks childish. So on the other side of that, what makes for a bad footer so that you can avoid those mistakes? First off, well, having no footer is an issue. While it technically isn't required for a website to work, it does provide great functionality for your website and not having it can be an issue. Plus, it just looks really weird, like a website without pants on. So put a footer on. Next, having an out-of-date copyright year is, uh, well, 
not great. Like, it's a small thing, but it's a big small thing. Nothing says I might not actively be using this website like an out-of-date copyright year. Finally, also having a bad menu design can be an issue. Again, I will always argue that simpler is better and, you know, maybe just having one menu is a good idea. If you're going to have multiple menus in your footers, make sure that they make sense and that the user can use them easily. So what can you, a non-technical person, do with all of this information? Well, first off, make sure that your copyright date is up to the right year. This is commonly missed, especially around this time of year in January, if you're watching this video in January, and it can be a bit of a turnoff if it's the wrong year. So just go ahead right now, pause the video, and go to check to make sure that the year in your copyright is correct. Next, like the header, make sure that the navigational menus are easy for someone who's new to your website to use and to find what they might be looking for. Again, simpler is better. If you or your friend can't navigate that menu, then you need to change it and maybe simplify it. Finally, if you're in the market for a new website design or maybe a new theme, if you use something like WordPress, you know, look at the footer of the themes that you're looking at and see if you like them and if they work. Make sure that there's a place where you could possibly add in social media links down there as well, or even a call to action. Like everything with your website, the best thing to do with your footer is to test it every now and then to see if it still works, and if it doesn't, then, you know, figure out what you need to do to make it better. So, what questions do you have about websites and website footers? Or is there something that you tried with your footer in the past that has or hasn't worked? Be sure to leave them down in the comment section below. Also, if you're in the market for a new or first website for your business, I would love to help you get started and create a website to get your business online relatively quickly and for a price that should fit your budget. Check out the link in the description below for more information and to sign up for a free one hour consultation. Next time out we're going to be talking about the home page and how you can craft the perfect home page to get people to stick around on your website and to learn more about your business. To see that video and other videos about web design, digital marketing, WordPress, e-commerce, and other website related topics, be sure to hit the subscribe button and to ring the bell for notifications. But until next time, I wish you and your business the best of luck.